This is what millions of Nigerians go through each day. Coming home and having to switch on a generator just for their basic needs is the norm. Simple tasks taken for granted elsewhere in the world are almost considered a luxury here. Most of the time there is no light at all. We can go for two days, sometimes three, without the light blinking. Almost every day, the same process of putting on the generator is repeated at the Shamo family home. It's very traumatic, really, really traumatic, because most times you run generator. It makes the home environment seriously not conducive. Most times, you'd rather be out than be home. For her husband, a civil engineer, the blame rests squarely on government, but the Nigerian people are also part of the problem. Uh, neglect by past governments. Uh, there was the, the poor attitude to provision of electricity. And Nigerians, uh, to me, uh, those are people who don't pressurize their government, they don't ask what the government is doing. So each of the government just do what it likes with electricity. After almost 50 years of independence, steady supply of electricity is still elusive. Infrastructure built decades ago is in a sad state. Power lines haven't been maintained. And despite over a billion dollars in investments over the past decade, only a little improvement has been seen. The Power Holding Company of Nigeria, or PHCN, is in charge of generating, distributing and transmitting electricity across Nigeria. They say the problems with power aren't their fault. There's shortfall in generation, there's shortfall in transmission, and of course there's shortfall in distribution. That is the, the manifestation of that is what we are seeing in the country now. Mr. Folusha Oyeshiku has worked at the PHCN for almost 30 years. Part of the problem, he says, is rapid population growth and inconsistent development of facilities. He says the conflict in the oil-producing Niger Delta region, where militants often damage gas pipelines to gain resource control from the government, also affects productivity. But many Nigerians say the government has too many excuses and are all talk but no action. Nigerians want results immediately. They have to be patient. If something has been bad for long, you cannot fix it in one day. The current president, good luck Jonathan, says providing steady electricity for the people is one of his main priorities. But he may have to pull off a big miracle in a short while if he hopes to change millions of minds who up till now are used to hearing big promises but seeing very little or no progress at all. We're in Lagos, the most populated city in Nigeria. About 18 million people from all over the country live here. Despite differences in tribe, religion and social status, one common factor for all is the lack of electricity. Whether rich or poor, all Nigerians have to deal with this problem. One of the only ways they can deal with it is with generators. For those who can afford it, these fuel-powered machines supply the electricity that the government doesn't. Last three weeks, we haven't experienced any light. Nothing to write on my about. It's very bad. Some companies are leaving Nigeria because there is no stable power supply. So it's a problem. Despite some negativity, some say the situation has gotten better. There's still room for improvement, but so far so good this year. It's more improved than how it is before. It's okay, they're trying. Uh, before is zero, but now it is improving. But recent improvements may not be enough for some big businesses, like those in the popular Allen Avenue Business District, which have been hit hard. A recent study commissioned by the Power Ministry claims Nigeria loses $130 billion each year because of the lack of constant electricity. Small businesses say they're also fighting to survive. Most companies in Nigeria, they have to start their work with. Without light electricity, the work can go on. Grace is a seamstress in Lagos. For her, working without steady power supply is frustrating and expensive. It's not enjoyable. They will keep spending money on buying fuel. By the time you calculate what you get at the end of the month, I might not be a prison and a well, it, affects me. it affects me so much. 
but recently, some Nigerians have come together to make a change. They say enough is enough of living in darkness, even marching to the Senate building in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, to make their voices heard. There seems to be a lot of rhetoric, you know, talk, talk, talk. And the action has been, you know, not measurable. Amara Wangpa is one of the organizers of Light Up Nigeria, a group which hopes to push for a change in the status quo. We hope to drive accountability. We hope to use the, the outcome of the elections to now begin to drive accountability. We don't want to leave the elections without plans. And that's why it's important for us to keep pressing the federal government. The campaign started off online via social networks Facebook and Twitter. It's now about a year old, with almost 30,000 Facebook fans and thousands of people tweeting the movement. I think the fact that the president has highlighted electricity as a national priority, moved to take over the power ministry, is a direct response to the pressure that we've put. It has transformed even the way young people look at the, the future of Nigeria. We now feel like veritable stakeholders, that we have something to say, that we have something to do, and that we have something to contribute. Nigeria celebrates 50 years of independence in October, but many say living in the dark is no way to celebrate. If there's a power in this country, I'm telling you, our problem is 80% solved. As life goes on, Nigerians will have to wait until the situation changes for good, while hoping that that change comes sooner rather than later.